Well, hi there. And today, a verse from Matthew 22, verse 2, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. The kingdom of heaven is manifest in a group of people who are allowing the kingship of Jesus to shape their lives in actual relationships. The kingdom of heaven is here likened to a great feast with music, feasting and rejoicing. This feast is in the context of love. We are to allow the rule of God in our lives to shape us to this enjoyment of God and his delights and ways. The old hymn puts it well when it declared, Him serve with mirth, his praise forth tell. That is always the outcome of enthroning Christ in our lives, in our homes, and in our churches. In the parable, the wedding illustration provoked many reactions, including violent hostility and rejection. But the most grievous reaction was indifference marked by lame excuses. The enthronement of Christ is to be a daily reality, and it is to be our daily delight to rejoice in Christ and in his goodness. We may have believed in Christ, but are we daily feasting at his table with him in his kingdom? Every day the table is set with love, kindness, and abundant joy. There is no stuffy religious atmosphere at this celebration. We must throw off all excuses, repenting of the indifference that makes us procrastinate. Open the Bible. Sing praises to the King of Kings, the King of Love, and let it dawn on you that you are not invited to the feast merely as a guest, but as one of the central figures we are the bride at the wedding, the apple of God's eye and the object of his loving kindness through all the unfolding ages to come. As Wesley said, rejoice the Lord is king, your Lord and king adore. Mm -mm -mm. Um, rejoice, give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice. Rejoice again, I say, rejoice.